I missed a mate in eight. There's checkmate in eight. I don't think I missed a mate in eight, did I? All right, so we're going to be doing this viewer arena, and then, of course, we have the sub battle with Benjamin. This is going to be a fun viewer arena, though, because it looks like there are a lot of players since, like, 22 to 2,000 rating range. Um, so it'll be more fun. Okay, so I get black in the first game. So the Vienna opening, there are a couple of ways that white can play. The, there's g3, there's bishop c4, there's also knight f3. Now, knight f3 kind of transposes back into a... Um, transposes back into a four knights opening in a little bit. So I'm going to play... Because he played here, I'm gonna. I still. I'll play the four knights. We play the four knights opening. Um, this was very. This this has been played quite quite a lot, obviously. Now I'm gonna go bishop b4. Keep it a little bit more imbalanced. Um, the jokes that jokes it starts the Vienna. Now I can play d5 here, which generally you want to strike in the center if you can. Um, you know, very very early on, uh, just open up the position. Uh, because now I create this um, this access point, the pawn on d3. It's okay, but it's not great. Now I'm gonna stop this knight g5 jump. I'll castle. And I think I'll play Bishop F5. Is this a sub arena? No, it's not a sub arena. No, not at all. Um, but for whatever reason, today does seem to be an extremely slow day. Like right now, there are only 117 players in this uh, viewer arena. And I know it's even on chess.com. There, there really aren't that many strong players online. So maybe it's just today is just one of these like slow days. Um, but thank you again also to everybody who's watching the nearly 20,000 of you guys. Thank you so much for, for tuning in today. He goes c4, good move. Um, I'm going to play bishop g4. I can play bishop h5 or knight d4. Um, it's going to go here. Now, I do have double stack pawns, but I do get an open file, so it's not that bad objectively. Yeah. I hit the knight. If c5, I just take. Maybe king g2 is a move. I mean, I can always sidestep with my king over. Maybe queen f5. Um, but it's complicated. Sub battle will be um, the sub. One second. It's a very tricky position. I don't like my position. So I'm going to sidestep with my king first off. Um, and now I think what I'm going to play is I'm going to go rook here. Try to bring this rook into the game, basically. Um, oh, I did blunder that. Okay, let's go here. I'm going to have to gambit something. But let's hope it works. Go here, hit the knight, hit the rook. He's got more pawns. But now I'm getting a pony to f4. And as we know, knife on f4 is worth a lot. He tries to stop me. So now I'm going to go the other way, hit the queen. And now I'm gonna, the floodgates are going to open because I'm going to push this pawn. And once I push the pawn, his king is going to become super weak. All my pieces are going to be actively targeting him. Like there's this. I have rookie 4 I also have knight e4 here, which is probably a good move. Um, I think I'm just going to take with the rook. Goes queen d1, logical move, tries to hang in there. Um, again, this should be losing somehow. I'm not quite sure why or how, but this should be. Now, I can obviously take, but I'm going to try to be mucho aggressive here with, with these ideas, with rook g4. Just take, and I'm going to try to just sauce him on the h file, g and h files here. I have rook d4 me, which is very... It's a little bit show-offy, but I'm going to play it anyway because now I fossilized the queen. I'm going to hit the pawn on h3, and it should be winning here. I missed a mate in eight. There's checkmate in eight. I don't think I missed a mate in eight, did I? I think there's a, this is just a forced checkmate, isn't it? I go check. I go check, 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 and mate. It's the ladder or the scissors. Can I make an Owens defense arena sometime? Absolutely, yeah. No reason not to. Take with a rook. Do I prefer Shockwars playing Sarah or MVL? Uh, okay, this checkmate. I, I would say I like both styles. They're, they're pluses and minuses to both playing styles. Um, Okay, um, again, I get black second game. Okay, my opponent, again, does not play the traditional Vienna with f4. They go knight f3. Um, now, I'm going to go bishop c5 here. Can I do a, a Schleiman variation arena? Yeah, I mean, I can do any, anything you guys want. It's just uh, I can only, I only do like one a day, if that. Take with the pawn, go rookie 8, hit the, hit, the, hit, hit the center. Let's go here and take a knight e4. And just take. I can also go bishop g4 here, but I'm going to take, and I'm just going to take. This actually looks very dry. Like, super dry. 
Uh, let's just go here. Maybe drop the bishop back. Maybe move knight d6. Let's go here. Maybe c5. Let's go back. Play c5. Maybe b6. Maybe knight c4 even. Because now his pawn is very soft. Where the pawn can't be pushed. Like I was able to extend my pawns. But now, I mean, my, my knight is good. My bishop is good. My pawn is also good over here. Let's go a5, a4. It's a little bit dicey here for white. Uh, I just trap his rook. <laughs> his rook just gets trapped here. A very sad rook. Now I can just very quietly ignore it. And now I just take the rook. And actually, just to just to um, kind of you know the sad you know what's sad here is if he takes, I can even go a4, and this knight is stuck. Look at this knight. It's just completely boxed in here. It's just a very sad knight. It's never getting into the game. Okay, now I get white. I'm going to play the traditional Vienna with F4. There's F F4 and G3 are the traditional ones. Takes, I believe, is not correct because it becomes a little bit like a King's Gambit, except I get really fast development here. I'm from Vienna. Vienna is a great city. Uh, let's go D4. Let's build a big center. Just take the pawn. Uh, this is, like, really, really good for me. I, I get quick access. I get quick development. King out of the middle of the board. I'm eyeing him. Can I play a Greek God X gift? Let's go for it. Let's take and go Knight G5. And I go here, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. This is not going to be pretty. Vienna is a great, is a great, um, great city. It was a little bit quiet when I went there, but I really do like it. Do you think you will get to four thousand forty five hundred rating? If not, why? Because it's mathematically impossible, pretty much. I'd have to play one game a day, and I'd have to one game a day and basically find someone in the rating range, and it's not possible. Actually, it's mathematically not possible because I'm the highest rated player on the site. What is Sag? Is that a word? Sag. Yeah, Sag. You know, that when you're not feeling well, Sag. That's in the English dictionary. It's a word. <laughs> okay, I'm going to play the Vienna. Actually, no, this time I'm going to play the other one. I'll play G3. F4 and G3 are the two primary lines. Bishop C4 is the other one that you can play. And now this is the Vienna that, that Levy Rosman showed to um, showed to Box Box in, in PogChamps 1. Play h3, castles, and f4. Okay, I want to go f4 and just cheese him on the king side, basically. Okay, it's knight h5. It's an interesting move. I mean, I'm going to play g4. I don't know. It's very interesting. Do I play g5 or do I go f4? This is very unusual. Very, very unusual. I also go queen e1 and f4. I, I mean, f4 allows knight g4, and then there's some, some kind of weird checkmate, so I don't want to go there. I think I'm going to go g5. I don't know if it's right. Thank you to Hortus Botanicus for the prime. Thank you to Hortus Botanicus. The sub battle with Ben is in, um, is in an hour and a half. Yeah. Hour and a half. Okay, now the problem for my opponent is that my king is actually very safe. His king is not very safe here. Um, because I have big targets on the diagonal. I can go knight here. I can go knight h5. And his uh, his king is very unhappily under attack in a move. Maybe already right here, knight d5. And... Any collab with Same? I don't have anything set up with him, but maybe. Okay, I can play knight h5. I can also just go like queen f3, queen g3. Again, the problem for black is that his king is very open, whereas my king is very, very safe. I have like rook g1. A lot of, lot of attacks here. Um, knight eight. Ooh, this is really mean. I have checkmate. I'm also threatening to hit him on f6 with both ponies and my rook. This is really, really bad for black. Okay, now I take... And I go queen here, and he just he can't stop the, the checkmate here. The knights are just, just all over his king, and the queen just delivers the coup de gras. What to do against the, the, the max lang max lang attack? Um that's this is a little bit of a different opening. I think Brad attack for the nine. Okay, chess blitz. Okay, so I'm gonna play g3 again. I played f4, I played the gambit a few times. I'm gonna go back to g3. Now d5 is the most principled move. Black tries to play in the center right away. This is what many grandmasters, including Vladimir Kramnik, Anish Giri, 
Um, Wesley So and others have played against me when I've attempted to play the Vienna Vienna against them. So, so yeah, so we we so basically this is traditionally the uh, the, the strongest approach for Black to play. Let's go h3, attack the bishop. As I recall, there's some line with bishop g5, but I'm going to try to target the pawn on this uh, diagonal here. Let's go here. Uh, uh, I kind of blundered. I think he could have taken. But now he blunders because I can take here, I think, and I hit the queen and I hit the bishop. So it's like queen d7 was also kind of a mistake. Do I know Eugene Tory? Not really. I mean, I, I know of him, obviously, but um, I, I don't know him personally. Well, I play in the next Grand Swiss. Um, you're talking about the tournament Isle of Man in October, November of this year. I'm very skeptical that tournament's going to happen because I don't really expect travel to be open to everyone. I think for these top level events where you have maybe 10 to 12 players, I think it's 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 um you you can ha you'll have over the board chess. I don't think that you're going to have um. One second. Let's go. Which one do I want to go for? I think I go here, actually. I don't know if it makes a difference. Uh, let's go here. But I don't really expect um, top-level tournaments, or not top-level tournaments, open tournaments with, with lots of players to be happening until next year. I just don't really think that's... I don't think that's realistic. Um, so I don't really expect to be playing in a, in a tournament like that, if it happens at all, which I don't think it will. Now, my idea behind keeping the rook on the line was that I want to maybe push this pawn, remove the bishop, like push this, force him to take, and then get my rook down because this pawn holds a knight and everything is under pressure on this diagonal from the white bishop. Would it be fair to, in your opinion, have online live hybrid tournaments? Uh, maybe. I mean, I, I think at some point it'll come back, but I, I just think, you know, right now vaccine rollout, it's been great in the U S but in many places it's, uh, it, it hasn't, you know, it ha hasn't really stuck. So, I mean, at some point it'll happen again where things kind of get back to normal, but I, I just think we're still like, it, it'll be, it'll be 2022. Do I ever play slow chess on online? No, I, I don't do that. It's, I mean, yeah, I don't do that. Um, yeah, I think the one again, I feel like that's, that's probably the one thing I would say that I'm a little bit critical of is I feel like we've gotten too high on the London system with pog champs. I think it's like, everyone's trying to play London because it's, it's a system that you can always play no matter what. Um, I do like it. Um, I do, I do like it as a system, uh, at 500, I would say probably around 1000 or 1100 though. I think you should start to mix it up and play some other systems as well. So I can, isn't this just Shamat? Shamat. That's just a ladder, just a, a good old fashioned ladder here. Okay, he goes, so the, so FG Manu Crush plays Knight 3. So we end up back into, in the four Knights. Uh, so I'm gonna play Bishop B4 here. Pretty sure his brother played chess and was better than him. Yes, my brother was a master level chess player. Very, very strong chess player in his own right. He, he set a record for the, um, for the most uh for the most national titles in classic chess in the u.s he had something like 13 national titles so like the nationals are held twice a year you have the grade so it's like if you're in kindergarten you play in kindergarten um if you play in um if you play in in you know and then they have this they, they have two nationals every year so there's one where you play your grade and there's the other one which is just regular you can play any section you want um and uh my brother won 13 of those so in total that he could have played in 24 and he won 13 13 of them i think the last one he won was in was in uh was uh you know june was it was it junior or senior year of high school so he won 13 13 titles 13 national titles let's go rook b8 i guess he wants the queen move also someone just asked me um did i did i what do i have any comment on Cran what cranwick said about mdl i, I don't know what cranwick said um I don't know what Kramnik said about MDL exactly. If someone, someone wants to inform me. Let's go. Um, I'll go here. Hmm. How do I play this? Maybe I go F5 in rookie eight. Crack. 
Kramnik said something about how MVL didn't work hard this past year. Wait, what did Kramnik say? Does somebody have a link to that? I'm kind of curious now. Let's go Queen F8. I don't know if someone has a link to that, if there's a clip. Um, let's just go E4 here, I guess. This might be a bad move. I have Queen F6, though, or something. I also Bishop A3, maybe, at some moment. I think E4 is a very bad move by me, but uh, it's probably still playable. Is this the right clip? Okay, thank you. Let's take. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I don't like pawn takes, so I just take. Um, gonna, let's play G5, Queen F5, maybe. I had a feeling. I had a feeling that wasn't going to be legit. So you saw how fast I was on the, on the trigger there. Um, I'm just going to go here, maybe Rook F8 next move. I thought that might be from the uh, from the candidates coverage today or something. Let's go Queen F3, maybe. E3 is a threat. Uh, it's a free pawn, I think. Let's see. What what is this? Uh, is this? Oh, this is in Russian. Is this not in English? Ah, uh, it's in Russian. Okay, but it says strange, strong words from Vladimir Kramnik regarding Vashi Lagrov. He does not feel that the Frenchman has worked hard enough over the past year, and that he perhaps doesn't deserve a shot at the title. Wow. Okay. Wow. All right. Okay. Let's get back to the chess. Strong words. Strong words. You know, I think here's what I would say in in regards to in regards to the comments. Um is that I think if you look at Maxime, I feel like um, I feel like Maxime probably probably he should have come up with a new opening. I feel like playing the night. I mean, I feel like playing the night orf, um, having a year and then getting blasted in the opening like that, where Fabiano basically had the first 30 moves prepared, um, you know, kind of is, is one of those situations where um, where I'd say it's, uh, you know, it's it, it's probably just like feeling like he didn't do enough prep. But I, I do feel like feels like he doesn't deserve a shot at the title. That's a little bit harsh. I mean that that is that is definitely harsh for sure. Chess seems like studying for an exam. If you don't do your homework, then you lose. Um, at times that's true, which is why like I mean again I don't think it's any se any secret, but um, like that's one of the things that's made me my enthusiasm in chess wane over the last couple of years. Is that it does feel more and more like it's less of an intuitive game and it's much more about. Who can come up with the best ideas using the computer? Play Queen D7 here. I can obviously take here. I'm going to take and play D5 and open up the center. Uh, oops. There's a fork. Oopsie daisies. Let's take the rook. I think I'm just going to cast my king or king b8. My brother does not really play much chess chess these days. Uh, he still plays a lot online, but um, but yeah, not not really so much. Okay, let's go knight d4 and take and maybe play f5 here. No, he's not my half brother. He's my he's my he's my he's my biological brother. Let's go f5. Okay, let's just take the pawn. Maybe bishop d5. I don't know if this is right, but it's 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 a move. Let's go here hit the knight i've got to close this diagonal so he can't move the knight and use this uh use this bishop to attack me let's just take again i'm i'm ahead by a rook i have a rook or a rook, rook for a bishop i'm up in exchange um so this is this i do want exchanges here why did he quit because he, he could not make a living from the game and he he found other interests so um i mean of course I mean, you're not going to make a living from chess. I mean, as a player, unless your rating is like at least 2650 plus. And think about 2650, how insanely high, insanely high that is to begin with. Like 2650 is better than 99 point like 98 percent of all other chess players. Um, and that's that's like that's how um, that's how that's how high rate you have to be just to have a shot to make a living. And by make a living, I mean like a, like a forty fifty thousand dollars a year. I don't I don't mean like some like some like huge six figure six figure sum. Um, so it's it's pretty uh it's pretty rough. Let's go here. Okay. Um I think I would keep the pawn here. I mean I'm protecting the rook, I'm hitting the pawn. I have like rook f2 next move maybe. Okay, takes. I missed that actually. That was a good move. 
Good check, I guess I take. Again, my queen holds the pawn. I've got a pin here. Maybe I go down and actually create the uh, the classic right triangle again. Yeah, this looks like the classic right triangle. Yep, here's the right triangle. He's trying to protect and do his own thing. Um, how do I win this? Let's go here. I think rookie two is a bad move. It's there. Okay, let's go here. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, let's go here. H4, that's a good move. I'm going to go here and just take the pawn, I guess. Let's go here now. I'm just going to run this bad boy up the board. One, two, three, four, alle, 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 as they would say. Actually, now I have check, though. I have the classic check. I check. I check, and I force the queens off, and then this pawn rules the day again. Let's keep going. So let's keep rolling. Did my brother have a big impact on my career? Definitely was someone who um, who played a, played a role. Um, I think the fact that he played chess and my brother played chess... Um, or no, sorry, that my brother played chess and my stepfather played chess, both of them. That made a big difference, for sure. Okay, I'm going to play h3, stop knight g4. Very important, very important move here. Um, I'm going to play d3, knight e2, and castles. But but yeah, so it's one of those things where, like with chess, I mean, as a player, you're not going to make a living. If you just want to travel around the world playing tournaments and make a living from that, you need to be at least 26, 50 plus. And if you think about it as a kid, let's say you're 16, 17, 18 years old, um, you know, you have a lot of interests, you're going to school, a lot of things are going on. And um, and if, you, if you're like 2200, are you really going to grind and like and hope that you can get to that level and make a living? Because I, I mean, I don't think most I mean, I think at some point you become practical about it. He's about twenty two hundred. OK, plays H5. Good move. Um, Who wants to lose? Nice username, too. Let's go F5 here. I'm actually not doing well, by the way. I just blundered an H4. What, what did I just do? Yikes. OK. Uh, uh, This is not good. Try to get sneaky. I'm going to try to go knight c3 and do something weird here. Just go. I guess I'll go here. Knight d5, maybe. There's king b8. Um. Go here, hit the pawn. I mean, oh, let's go check. Maybe I'm gonna try to get tricky here. I, I feel like I have some tricks here. Maybe like let's go here. I'm trying to get really tricky. I don't know if it works, but I'm trying to get very tricky. I guess I'll just take here. It's a good move. I'm going to move faster. Okay, how do I attack here is the question. I just have to make sure the game goes for another, like 20 moves. That's it. Oh, that was a very poor move. If I can make this game last for like another 10 moves, I have a chance. But if I can't, then I'm just going to shoot. I probably can't. Let's go here. Let's go here. I have C6 maybe. I just have to make this game last another like 20 moves. If I can make it last 20 more moves, I'm going to win the game. Uh, okay, let's go here.
Okay. Thank you to Dapper Bears for the Prime. Thank you to Yoshi is a Killer for the two months. I'm nearing for the nine. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. <laughs> uh, let's let's keep going. Okay. Yeah. No, we just keep rolling along. Keep rolling, rolling, rolling. Okay. All right. I'm gonna do some. I'll, I'll still play the four nights again. Like I said, traditionally is not how you play it. Is night of three, but. So let's do the mirror. This is turned into the Gucci piano. Although it's a Gucci piano with knights on C3 and C6, so it's a little bit different. This is my first time on stream. Are you playing viewers right now? Yes, we're doing a viewer arena, so we're playing viewers of the stream. Is it better to learn theory early on? No, it's better to know a basic opening setup and understand like the, the ideas within that opening. But actual memorization, you should never be really thinking about until you're probably like at least 1500 um so that that's what i would say like actually actual memorization you should not be worrying about till you're at least 1500 because the sequences aren't going to matter the ideas and the themes are all that really matter okay let's take with the pawn the vienna i think is good for is is pretty good for for beginners so i'm gonna go here again the point is i have the double stack but i have an open line for my rook so it's not so bad So where did they get the idea of themes? I would say primarily just watch watch the watch the opening videos and you'll understand what the basic ideas are. Because there always are openings, whether it's YouTube, whether it's on chess.com, whether it's like on Twitch, there always are there always are videos explaining things. Okay, I can take with the knight. I could have taken with the rook too, maybe, but knight takes looks okay. Um knight h4 is a logical move, but I think I can actually just kick that pony out of town again. And I'm just going to start to overwork him on the king side a little bit. Like, bring my queen in. It's a little bit dicey. Let's go here. I want to bring my rooks in. Just go, like, here. Rook f8. Maybe knight b5 at some moment, too. Queen h5 is a good move. Let's go here. go c5 again i want to sort of get my ponies into the game i'm not gonna let him win this po this pawn and i'm gonna go king g6 maybe i take i also have knight d4 maybe king to g6 maybe a pound takes and knight d4 i can also just actually i can take go back reroute the re reroute the sco check and i'm doing pretty well with knight c6 here my hair is a mess today oh i'm so sorry you guys apologies now the thing is his pawns are weak and I'm getting bastions. I, I have multiple bastions. My knight is on a bastion here on b5 where the pawns can't attack it. And then I'm also I also have a bastion coming on d4. So I have multiple bastions here, so I should be doing very, very well. Okay, let's go sco check to uh sco check a3 is a move, but also sco check d4. Actually, I really like sco check d4 because now I, I hit the pawn and um and i like this go check is good but then this go check on c6 is also good because on pawn on um on b4 is very weak let's go here and play h5 what is this terminology you've never heard of the sco check sco check Everybody in chat speaks Polish. I mean, it's a very common language. Everybody knows Polish here. Um, let's go knight b5. Too much playing with Bartosz. Yes, too much, too much. Okay, let's put the other knight here. Um, now I can take the knight. I don't really actually love my position here. His knight is really well placed. So I'm just going to go back. Uh, my opponent just got his, his rook trapped. I just trapped his rook with my pony. And now let's take... go here oh and apparently one of my mods from the great country of poland uh drew a 2800 in a uh in a in um in a game so i'm gonna pull that up after this so we'll we'll honor one of the mods who drew a, a 2800 i think it was in this i don't know if it was in this arena or not but um we'll, we'll take a look in a second let's go d5 here let's go here let's go here i can just take wait what what just happened okay let's go here Let's 
go here. Okay, we got the dub. All right, let's pull up this game. What's this game? Okay, so let's let's see. What was this game? So this was E4, E5. This is a game between Max Milnick, one of my mods, and Vugar, Vugar, Vugar Rasulov. So E4, E5, Knight, C3, Knight, six. Okay, so then we have the Vienna game. Pawn to F4. Pawn to D5. So Vugar, Vugar plays the right line. So takes EF4. So this kind of turns a little bit into a um, into a King's Gambit because normally... Why, if you're playing the Vienna, you take and you go like Queen F3 and so forth. Um, but instead, he plays takes, and now we have the, the transpose into a, a King's Gambit. Knight F3, Bishop D6, Queen E2, very good move by Max Milnick. Queen E7, they trade. D4, Rook E8, Bishop E2, King F8, pretty standard. Okay, so White gets a Tower of Power here. So Black should be a little bit better. Um, but Knight A6 is a very strange move. I feel that in this position, the first thing you should do is play a6 make sure this knight has no jumps because right now you'd love to get this bishop here and the bishop holds it so if white could access b5 it's very tricky um so knight a6 a3 good move by max milnick cuts off the jumps for the black knight which is precisely why the knight does not belong here on the rim um because there's there just no jumps so rookie d8 bishop d2 rookie one looks good looks good rookie one Knight e4, f5, knight g5, very nice move here, by the way, because the idea is white gets a bastion on e6, pawn on d5 supports it, and then you can also win this pawn on e3 behind it as well. So f4, takes, knight g5, c6, takes, knight e4, this should be 8, g3, another good move, undermine, undermining the uh, black pawns here, uh, because they support each other very nicely. Takes, knight e5, another fantastic move by Max Milnick. Uh, again, you don't you want to sort of blunt this bishop, and when you go knight e5, uh, the knight is hitting the pawn, and you sort of close off the center part of the board. So knight d7, rook d8 takes b4. Now, personally, if you're if you're trying to salvage, you're trying to make a draw here. Knight c3 is a little bit better because you can undermine the pony on d5, and then the pawn on e3 falls. The one thing that um the one thing that black has here is he does have a pass pawn with the knight supporting. So I would go knight c3 just to get rid of that knight and win the pawn. So b4, a5, takes, rook b3, knight c5, takes, a6, back, rook e3. I don't know if rook e3 is the best move, but it's not a bad move either. So takes, takes, king e7, h3, king d6, king e4, king c7, h4, h5, king f5. White tries to run with the king here towards the king side, rook g1, king e6, rook f1, king e5, king a7. D7. Again, Black misses many opportunities here to go rook h1 and take the pawn on h5. But he goes here, knight e6, king f7, takes, takes, h6, h7, king g6, takes, and then knight f5. And um, and at the end of the game, white captures the pawn and it ends in a draw. So very nice game by Max Milnick, uh, 1975, and he draws against Vugar Rasulov with a very bold rating of 2835. Very nice game played by the mod, Max Milnick. All right, so let's get back to the viewer arena and let's keep going. Okay, now, <laughs> right on cue, we get Vugar. Okay, let's take, let's go here. Right on cue, let's go here in D6. Congrats, Max Milnick. Yeah, let's go here. Oh, I had Bishop F2, what am I doing? Oh my gosh. Bishop F2 is just winning. Okay, let's just go here. I can play G5 maybe, Knight G4. Yeah, imagine if I lose now. I know I was thinking about that. How, how hilarious would that be? He goes there. Oh, I'm just going to play g5. Maybe knight h5. Hit the bishop on g3. So, yeah. Uh, I can obviously take the bishop. I think I should. Because actually f2 is hanging. So we just take with the f pawn, which is pretty ugly. Now I'm just going to castle my king. I have two ops. Um, and I should be doing very well here. Okay, I can obviously take the knight if I want. I think I will just take and go like knight e7 maybe. Again, he has ugly pawns, on G or he's got double pawns on g2 and g3. Um, so his pawns are out of the center. And additionally, I have like knight f5 here, maybe rook e8, knight e3. Uh, let's just go here, knight e3 ideas. Okay, I can take if I want. I mean, knight e3 looks very pleasant. I think I'm going to trade though, because I suspect that my knight is better than... Um, my knight is better than his bishop, basically, here. Goes queen e2. Uh, let's just go a6, maybe.
If you lose, the card becomes a mod and Max Milnick, take, Max Milnick takes over the stream. Indeed, I can get behind that. Okay, let's go. Um, let's just trade the Queens. It's a little bit dubious doing this. I'm not sure it's actually all that great, but I should be better here. Because his pawns are so soft here in the center of the board. Or on the edge of the board, sorry. So I take... I mean, everything is so very under attack here. So he was there. I can take this pawn. I thought knight e3, though, should just be winning. So he takes, I just take. And the double stack is really a problem in any end game here for white. Okay, because now I just take. Let's go here. And now I go c6. I'm just up a pawn. His, he also has this double stack that really is not really fantastic. Just go f5. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reroute my knight around to this bastion square at some point, I guess. Just go here. Can get it to d4. Just go here. Should be winning. Goes g4. Now I can obviously trade if I want, but I think f4 is just good enough here. Actually, I do have to be a little bit. I guess I just go here. Now if I go b6, he take. Ah, I can just take. Yes, of course. If he takes, I just take the pawn first, and then I have. Then I'm just winning the king and pawn end game. Especially because any king and pawn end game, he has a stack here. Takes. Okay. Just take and take. He goes c5. Again, this should be winning. To be a little bit careful here not to mess this up. Um, let's think about how I do this. b5 is almost certainly winning, I guess. Or, meh, should be winning. I think I'm going to go here and take. This should be winning. Here, here, a5, c3, a6, c2. Yeah, I just win. Because I have c3. Thank you to Glitter for the three months, Frost and Mamba for the five, and Frotus for the prime. Thank you so much to Frotus. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, we get the dub. So I keep my role as a streamer, and Max Milnek keeps his role as a, as a moderator.